that we're recording, that is. Good to go. Excellent. So we have a recording. Thank you for that, Ranji. You're very, very star you are. Tuesday, the 1st of September, 2020. And good morning, doctor. Ooh, impressive. I am um, opening this one up. It's my birthday tomorrow. So let's call it a birthday present from me to you. It's why I'm opening this one. It's not the only reason I'm opening it up. I wanted to show everybody that there is, or there are, alternatives. We don't need to, to, to lose, to be wrong. So my speech, I always write a little sermon for the Tuesday morning, and here it is. Where, how, and why do traders go wrong? How can a trader avoid that? A demonstration with examples here this morning will follow using our old DWL2. Many of my members will recognize that this is the old DWL2, and I've hidden some of our major stuff off it. That was the plan. Uh, this session, I'm really looking for your participation. Battling or not, attending one of my webinars for the first time or not, your input here will help you and other members of this or our group. It can bring us all leaps and bounds closer to the round table to all day trading webinars on the Dow, the US 30, however you want to call it, or to consistent profitability. I'm going to share with you an analogy. I always use um, driving analogies, and I've got one here, a Roman roads analogy. I want you to all look at that picture for a moment. So many people think, I can't do it, I can't do it, I'm no good at things, I can't do it. I haven't got a piece of paper that tells me I can do it. So tell me, lads, when you look at that picture, what do you think now of whether or not things can be done? Look at it, without a single degree, these guys in poxy funny looking dresses built us these roads that lasted till now. We still have Roman roads now. And then engineers with their qualifications arrived and we see our current roads, don't we? How often do you drive and you see someone coming towards you in your lane with their head down looking at the mobile phone, mobile phone? Or you pass by someone with a similar attitude, they're looking at the mobile phone. Hi, Sassy, good to see you on. So I was thinking over the weekend, the most important thing in rule-based trading is knowing which situation you should choose to use certain selected rules and the associated terms and conditions of trading from charts. We talk, people talk all the time about rules-based trading, but they never talk about the timing or the use of those rules. Trading is not a one-size-fits-all. It never was, and it never will be. There's context. Some people trade four-hour charts, two-minute charts, one-minute charts, five-minute charts. You're using rules to suit the context or situation that you and or the markets are in. You're using rules to suit the instrument and the time frame too. The GBP dollar and other FX pairs move differently to the US 30. <clears throat> it's a substantial difference, and it can be said for many other instruments. If you use a one-size-fits-all approach, you may fail. A bit like a soccer player playing rugby with the same mindset. It's your job to observe and adjust as a trader. Observe carefully then, as an old mentor in a past life once said to me, without being carefully observed. We won't go into that. You might like entry methods or trade management. If you have top of the range psychology, that's fine, but most don't. There is in fact psychological resistance to rules in many traders. They want to be in trades, so sloppy entry means they can get into trades and not have to sit out near misses. It's also frustrating for these traders as they can kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel. But in reality, they're still miles away. All systems work in a trend. 
anything that tells you to buy in an uptrend or sell in a downtrend and doesn't have too tight a stop loss will work in a trend. What you need to be is proactive or as I've said before, a versatile professional trader. Rule based but react to the market in a very dynamic way. The trader should trade charts as they evolve through scenarios they expect. This is higher in intensity in trading work terms, but has the greater chance of success. Thanks, Andy. I'll run through my trades from the morning in a moment, but there's first two more slides I want to show you. One is this. Some of like there are battlers in my group. There are absolutely there are battlers in trading everywhere. And I want to point you out with this picture. It's not the future you're afraid of. It's the fear of the past repeating itself that haunts you. So if you've been doing it wrong, or if you haven't been doing it right, or if you haven't been doing it at all yet, know that there is a right way to do it. There is a next right step to take. And you need really only three indicators. You need a primary, a secondary, and a tertiary, and we will look at some of those in a moment. Don't worry. I also want to show you this picture. My group remember last week, and my group remember last year, and they're on. Those of you who are not members of my group, you are online now and chatting with how many are we? We are 83 people. You're welcome to type a question or challenge anything I say, and the members of my group have been on webinars along with me and will be able to confirm whether I'm now. Last year, about a week ago last year, I said, lads, and the year before, in fact, and the year before that, lads, the last week in August is always my best year. I think I made nearly, a, a, of a regular mortal anyway, I made about a year's salary in, in the last week of August this year. And I'll probably do it again next year. And I know it's the 1st of September today, but I didn't do bad today either. I'll run through my trades in a minute. Now, last week, Thursday, I want to show you one more slide. I subscribe and I get this email. It's free and I get this email because I'm interested. You might have or you might not have heard of Nick Leeson. Remember Nick Leeson? He brought down Bearings Bank. I'm watching the questions and comments. So if you've got anything to add, if you know him or you don't. Well, he sends out this email at the end of each week to say, this is what we did for the week. He did a total of 566 pips last week. Well, I didn't, I did 550 pips on Thursday last week, on one day. And others of my members in the webinar know that, and others of our group did the same. Am I speaking shite, anyone, my lads? Anyone wanna chime in? There you go. Oh. Laptop says, great film, Rogue Trader. That's it, yes, that's him, that's it. Zoe there, thank you, Thursday was a great day, it was indeed. So we, and Mark, are you on Mark? Don't know, but Mark, like, in the one day, in Thursday, we wiped the floor with Nick Leeson's weekly results. Us, little old us, little old, um, never got a pay piece of paper to our name, because you all know I didn't quite finish my school exams and stuff. I've no interest in school whatsoever. It was my maths teacher, Roy, that got me interested in, in accounting long after school. It was with his help I decided I'm going to learn stuff. And I learned languages and I learned maths and I passed with distinction then. But we did so much better than someone who is an immensely able trader. How did we do it? Well, we knew August was going to be bloody great for a start. How did we know that? Because we watch the bloody markets and we have rules with associated terms and conditions. And our rules keep us safe. I've taken a loss today. I took one trade, which was a loss. I will show you my trades for the day, whether you're a member of the group or not. I took a buy here during the 732 bar. He says I can buy it. He's above the green line. Yes, I've hidden one. I've, I've kept all the, the major stuff off, lads. I've just got simple, simple stuff on the chart. 
I took off this move 30 pips. I perhaps could have done more. I had a 30 pip target. I was, I'll be honest, a little bit sort of nervous about this webinar coming up because it's the first time I've opened up to outsiders. It is what it is. I was nervous. I had a 30 pip target. It's before eight. London isn't open yet. Wasn't expecting anywhere, anything to go and do anything mad. But these outer lines were expanding. The dot was flipped from above to below. And this had gone through that zero line. So, and I was above the double white lines, which were having a green line in the middle. So it said, yeah, everything on screen said, yeah, you can buy that, James. So I took my 30 pips and I said, cool, okay. And then the bands narrowed. And uh, I think around here, I went and refilled me coffee, which is beside me, no problem, happy days. And then I did take another set, 8.05. 8.05, I took a sell, 3.45. During that bar there, I took a sell. That's what I did. During that bar, I took a sell at 8.05. He says 8.04, so it was him. I thought, yeah, move, 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 can't see. 8.04, I was in at 8.05, so during that bar somewhere, I took a sell. And I took a minus five here because, and my guys know me, I'm a tight git, an absolute tight git. And I did write on the group, at my age now, I don't trust, and apologies for the language, lads, I don't trust the far, never mind the Dow, especially when I see a big bullish engulfing bar like that. So I took a minus five on the chin, and now I'm down to plus 25. And then I looked at my thought, I was a bit stupid coming out there. That's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. I should have held that, you plant pot, is what I thought to myself. And I went back in during the 807 bar with another 30 pip target, and I got, indeed, my 30 pips uh, I think it was during that bar there. And I witnessed that there was then some bullish divergence. I do teach divergence. I do like divergence. It is my want that I use it. I do use it charts that are a little more complicated than this one. What is that now? I've got 55 pips on the table, and I'm a happy buddy camper. But divergence, rejection of a line, it's something I talk about often with my group. And then a buy signal. And I was in it during the eight, wait, I'll have to scroll back. Or oh, Zoe, do you remember what the hell time we took that set of your buy? Because you were in it too, weren't you? I'm scrolling on the group to see what time, but I don't have a memory and I'm not going to open the journal. Uh, 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 where are you? Where are you? But I did share it in the group and I'm just looking for where I wrote it. I wrote it, of course. Did I write that just to you, Zoe, or in the group? Can't find it. One, the minute, 8.20 bar. During, thanks, Zoe, yeah, it was during the 8.20. Thanks, Nicholas. So during the 8.20 bar, I took a buy. And I thought, well, you're still closing in, you, that line, and you're still closing in. So that ain't great. But you, that little white dot, did say, hey, look. And he said it in a very voluminous voice. So I thought, okay, so I'll take it and we'll see. Uh, and that had gone through there. So that was a good sign. And there you go. Off that move, I took 60 pips. And I'm very, very, very happy with me 60 pips. I actually took it during that bar there. I took me 60 pips during that bar. But that's it. Um, I can, can, I can. Um, I'll get rid of that first and then I'll draw it with, I'll draw it with lines, okay? Okay, there's two places. I have to go back a bit, wait before I do the line. Oh, God, I've put a stupid line on. I can't move while I'm drawing a, a, a chart. I can draw it. You, you know I use something else, Ken, but I'll show it with this, okay? Yeah, I'll show it with this line. So I'm going to go tools. I'm going to go across here. I've got a lower low or at least, sorry, a higher low or at least a double bottom. For me, he's a higher low. That line does slope up ever so slightly. There's nothing sloping up about this line, is there? Nothing at all sloping up about this line. So we've got some bullish divergence there, or we could look at what we've called before, we have called it before, exaggerated divergence here. These wet, wetty, sloppy bottoms, there's a little bit of exaggerated divergence across there with the, the sort of, that's a, a fractal, remember, a bullish fractal, and a bit of an exaggerated looking divergence there. 
But that one there is the cleaner one. And remember, I am looking at a higher time frame as well, Ken. If you look at your three minute, because you're one of ours, if you look at your three minute, like my webinar screen, you will see exactly that, okay? Okay, someone saying in, in, in a private message, there's one person who doesn't know the possible value of a pip. Perhaps you could shine a light on that for him. Absolutely. Well, here you go. If that's 60 pips, if you're spread betting, you are trading a pip, pip a, a, a quantity of money, an amount of money per pip. Now, when you let's say you, you, everyone is familiar with horse racing and betting on horses. So if you go into a bookies and you put a pound um, win on a horse and it wins at 10 to 1, you'll get 10 pound. Uh, that's right, Dave. I know I'm showing the one minute screen, not the higher time frame screen. But Ken is a member of our group, so he knows to look at the three minute for those times. Um, here, if you trade a pound a pip, you don't get odds, you get a reward risk ratio. Your stop loss would be the dot, this white dot here, and your, your target would be two times that. So if you say you have a stop loss that is there, if you enter there, your stop loss is there, you've got a stop loss of 23 pips. So technically, you're looking for 46 pips. I'm always looking for a little bit more with the Dow, and I'm a tight git, as you know, so I get away with a 15 pip stop loss because I am such a tight git. So my stop loss was here, and up there, 60 pips. So if you're trading a pound, a euro, a dollar per pip, you just made $60 in six minutes or 60 pounds in six minutes, or 60 euros in six minutes. And if you sold it over there somewhere at 807, where I did, 807, where I did, and you come out to 30 pips down here, 30 pips down here, about six minutes, you made 30 pounds. If you're trading 10 pounds a pip, you're, you've made 300 pounds or 600 pounds. And we do have some um, spreadsheets. Let me just find one of our spreadsheets. We do have spreadsheets that allow you to trade. Um, where are you? I'm going to look at the, the uh, Gates webinar challenge, maybe that one, or new Gates and margins would be less. So, no, I can't find it. I'm going to go for the Gates webinar challenge. I'm going to open this spreadsheet, bring it in. And we do have a, a spreadsheet that tells you how much per pip you can trade or you should trade depending on how much money you have. How much money you have, increase your stake. How much money you have, increase your stake, and so on. And this is a kind of a rags to riches spreadsheet. And as you can see, as your balance increases, so your stake per pip increases depending on your broker. It's doable, it's real, it's for everyone. Um, it, it, it's Nobody is out of the loop here in just exactly the same way that anyone can walk into a bookmaker's or a casino and put a pound on red and black or a pound on a horse. So anyone can open up a broker account and place a buy trade which would be a, a buy trade above the lines, green, green, buy, red, red, sell. Above the lines, you're allowed buy. Below the lines, you're allowed sell. Have some rules. Know what they are. Have some associated terms and conditions. Know what they are. Print them out by all means. And just in case for Dave and for everyone, I'm going to show you that divergence on the three-minute chart. There it is. Uh, what did I say? 6.45. Look, it's there. You've got a low. You've got a higher low. You've got a low. You've got a lower low. And you've got a, it's consecutive higher lows over there. He's higher. I know we've got this dip below, but look at him. He's a low test bar. And he's a fractal. Okay? Nice one. Thanks for that. Um, apparently, the PIP situation is clear. And I do talk about fractals. I do talk about price action. And they are very useful things to have and that knowledge you know of price action and of fractals and of you know of of, of price indicators and charts and things like that all of that knowledge is free to attain to everybody there is a website it is www.babypips.com and I'm going to share it to everyone right now by right www.babypips.com. You could go there 
and learn everything you need to know about being a trader. There are a few things I teach that are outside of that. There are a few things I teach that are different to that. For instance, they will tell you to look for divergence on a one hour chart and I'll find it on a one minute chart. I'll find it on a five minute chart, a three minute chart. I'll find it where the hell I choose to find it. And it is never wrong. Note we have, no, we don't, I missed it, sorry. Note we have lower lows across here, higher lows across there, and we have this pullback. I do tell my traders, my group, that divergence is not something that you can trade, but you sure as hell can manage your trade from it. And you might remember the last paragraph I read on my sermon. It was, you might lack entry methods. There's an entry method. There is a trigger to buy. We are above the double white lines. If you're American, you have double yellow lines in the middle of the road. If you're in the UK, Ireland, Europe, you have double white lines in the middle of the road. Cross them by all means and go into oncoming traffic and see what happens. The guards, the police eye, catch, catch you. You will get points. You will get penalties. You will get a fine. If you buy below the line, you risk higher risk lower probability, you risk giving away your money in exactly the same way you risk giving away your money on the roads. That's why my driving analogies work. If you're below those lines, you only want to sell it and all. And whilst in, in Europe, whatever, we have left and right on a chart, we have above and below. It is very clear. It is very simple. And then we have a green dotted line in the middle to make it look like a road or a red dotted line in the middle to make it look like a road and just give you that psychological nudge that says below me, you only want to sell. Above me, you can think about buying it. But let's look at that for a moment because you see here we had this, hey, hey, I'm above. Bye, bye. Well, I'm not above. I'm, I mean, sorry, I'm not below. I'm above. So don't will you? And I'm closing in a lot. And I'm certainly not above. So this is not a good trade. You with me? But now, hey, look, I've got above the lines. And look at me. I'm below the price. And look at this little cross here. Signal. That's what we look at. That's an entry method right there. And then trade management. Well, it's divergence. You see that high there? I'm sure you do. I'm going to use annotate. I'm going to go draw and I'm going to say there is a high and it's higher than that high. So we have between there and there higher highs. This is on a one minute chart. Then look right below. We go right below that guy there. We've got this point in time, haven't we? And we've got that point in time there. If we come right below this one. So we've got HH over LH. Is that divergence? It is, isn't it? So what can you do with your buy trade? Well, you can lock in profit, can't you? That's what you can do. You can manage your trade, trade management. That's what you could do. That's what you should do. And if you see that all red, it's what you must do. Lock in some profit. Then this line and this line are observed to be closing in, which says price isn't really going anywhere now, lads. It might be time for you to take your profit somewhere here, and it is 30 pips. Maximum 40, you'll never get out at the top. Never, never, never. Three times in my life I've done it, and I've been at this since 2004. I don't look to do it. It's bloody random is what it is. If I got out at the top, it was random and all, or it was at my target, which was perhaps just my target. Okay. And then you have an entry method that says you could sell me here. And if you're sensible with your stop loss, you'll use one of these dots. And if you're an idiot tight git like I was, you'll come out there and lose five pips. OK, I did that. I made mistakes. I'm human. I'd be stupid and big headed and an utter knobhead to tell you that I never make a mistake. I made a mistake right there. You know what? I went straight back in and I got my money back because that was a continuation. We got an inside bar. We got a breakout below the inside bar. We got money. We've got, remember, I saw that divergence with the low or higher low over the lower low. And then he goes green and he says, oh, look, a fractal. Have you taken your money yet, James? I have charts. Yeah, thank you very much. Well done, James. Nice one. And get ready, won't you? Because I'm going to give you a buy signal right here. And I did. 
that's it and i traded that that's what i did this morning and it was nice and easy absolutely and jason says there looks like a buy signal right now and i can't get my arrow back clear all drawings i did clear. give me my arrow 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 got an arrow move it move it move it yes there was a buy signal now technically if you go in now it's late but if you went in as it crossed above those lines there you already have some pips on the table and you could be finger on button to come out be careful because that's now a, um what's it called bearish engulfing bar and we do have some levels there no we don't okay you've got a big round number on the go and we're rangy along it and the higher time frames do suggest i'm a bit tight here i'm a bit awkward here you know so be careful there with that one jason um, i'm still looking for another 657 but i'm not in that trade uh, had I been, yes, I just want to see what he looks like. No, you're looking for a MACD scalper now. What we're waiting for is for that a pullback and a continuation and for the line to cross. My guys will identify it as um, a hopper. And there you go. There's one of mine already pointing out that there was bearish divergence. Thank you, Andrew, you superstar. There you go. Well done. Bearish divergence. And it is of a lower high over a higher high i'm going to clone that i'm not going to clone that line i'm going to create a new one off a higher high you got to go from the same place right below the higher high so if you did buy here and you could absolutely buy here there's no problem buying there if you bought right there as soon as it went up above that line there no problem jason absolutely but it's finger on the button why well because there's a brn my guys will know BRN is a big round number. And as at there, you've got 17 pips on the table. But as at there, it's broken below the low of that bar and you've already got a bearish engulfing bar. And my guys would probably say, FOB, FOB, B, finger on button. FOB stands for push the button, take the money. 10 pips, I'll take 10 pips over a, over a what? Over a sweating now on break even. The guys will do. We're looking at a one minute chart we're not always looking for 200 pips you know we might only be looking for 10 to hit our target for the day we're watching now to see if we get a fractal and if we get a fractal here my lads will know well, we're also waiting for the hopper and the macd scalper won't they you know and that's the reality there are reasons to go into trades much as and i wrote or i read something that a colleague of mine posted on his uh, Facebook page over the weekend. He has, what, what is it called? It's Ian, and he writes on symmetry trading. Um, and he wrote, some people just, you know, they go to bookies, and I don't know why. I think they want excitement. In much the same as the way as retail traders, they get into it and they think, oh, this is going to be exciting. I'm bored trading. I'm very, very bored with my trading. Trading is boring. Hi, Elisa. Nice to see you on. I've got Bollinger Bands on, and that's just a fancy way of drawing the middle band so that it keeps me, you know, psychologically in tune above and below the middle Bollinger. Parabolic SAR. I've got, this is just an Osmer, an oscillator of moving averages, very similar to a MACD. And then I've got a couple of EMAs, slightly higher time frame EMAs, all based on FIB numbers. Everything is based on FIB numbers. This is not, Elisa, this is not my major strategy by any means. Um, but it's the first time I'm opening up to everyone outside and everything. And I really want to show them that they don't have to go spending a fortune on magic indicators or on some, you know, Greg Secker kind of wannabe plank. Um, and that they don't need a degree in mathematical science. Nothing. You need nothing. You need patience, you need discipline, you need a laptop, and ideally you need at least a second screen. That would be very, very useful. Um, oh, Ross, nice one. Good to see you. Uh, uh, Ross, a disciplined trader is a board. Yes, absolutely. Sit on your hands. So through all of that crap there, I sat and I did nothing. Through all the charts from seven, and I did not on across here. Not on, not on, not on. That's where I placed my first trade. You're right, Paul, he's a marketing man, not a, not a trader. Uh, and then look at that, the divergence has issued an invitation to another cell, hasn't it? There's your invitation. Hey, look at me, I'm way outside the bands, which are starting to expand. 
I'm below a big round number, but be careful because I am close to a big round number. So you're being careful, aren't you? You're watching the price action. You're looking for the divergence. Who else sees the divergence? I know you see it. You've got a lower low over a higher low. So you're already in that cell, but FOB, are you not? Of course you are. You have to be. You absolutely have to be. But yeah, that agrees with the higher time frame. And I'm sure the higher time, I'll do it on this chart. I'll go three minutes. And the three minutes is in sell mode. You see that, Jason? You would never have taken the buy had you been looking at the higher time frame, would you? But you'd sure as hell be in that sell now, wouldn't you? So, Jason, I'm betting you got your money back off the sell because I'm hopeful that you took that sell. But there you go. That's the kind of thing that a trader can use every day to trade profitably and consistently and sensibly. And thanks for making the effort, Ross. Nice to see you on here. And welcome back to the group, by the way. I made up you rejoined it. And there again, look, LL over HL. And any of my traders would have said, oh, look, a low test bar. If price goes above him, I'm out. And my traders, no doubt, would have, could have, should have entered the cell and took maybe 10 pips right here. Cheers, Ross. 10 pips. Nothing wrong with 10 pips during that bar. Nothing wrong at all with 10 pips there. And remember, if you did take that buy, you had reason to put finger on button and you could have taken 10 pips there. There, lads, in the space of eight minutes is 20 pips. 20 pips. Because not every trade will run 50, 60, 100 pips. That one, great. Yeah, it ran 60 pips for me. And for me, that's my daily target. Twice over, I got 55 across here, that one and that one. Total of 55 and 60, I'm done. That's it. I'll be back on the afternoon session still, lads, for us, for our group. We're, we're trading 130. I will be on. But I can't promise you tomorrow. Kasia told me to promise, to, to promise, to, uh, to plan nothing for tomorrow. I think she has something in mind for us. Um, I have said on many, many occasions, Consider, if you're married, that these indicators are your wife or your girlfriend, if you're not married, but you're living together with someone. If you have a different opinion to that of your wife, you're wrong. I'm not saying that to butter up the women. I'm saying that because that's what it is. You're wrong. Take it on the chin. You're wrong. Or you're going to have a really, really, really awful day. Perhaps a really, really awful week. So I don't argue with my wife. I say, yes, dear. Yes, dear. Whatever it is you want, dear. Yes, dear. No problem. Consider these indicators are your wife and your wife says, you should buy me. I will, mom. Thank you very much. Boom. The money. You should sell me. I will. Thank you very much. Here, she says, you should buy me with caution because I'm closing in. So, you know, it's that kind of take me, don't wake me uh, approach. You know what I mean? And you've all heard it. Everyone's heard it. I've heard it. Take me, don't wake me. That's what that's saying. The bands are closing in. This isn't the best you're going to get, lads. But here, the bands are opening up. This ain't so bad. This is okay. Here, the bands start opening up. So you're glad you're in it now. And I, yeah, okay, I use analogies that are strange and different. But I use analogies that you use in everyday life. My driving analogies are such that I'm looking at my windscreen here, but you can bet your sweet ass I've got a three minute and a five minute open on another screen, and that's my rear view and my wing mirror. There you go. Uh, Bibiana says, which broker are good for US 30, as the spreads are huge on some of them, and you have to make quite a few pips just to cover those. Our man in the group here, Andy, uses a place called Core Spreads, and Core Spreads, correct me, Andy, if you're on. Are you on, Andy? Um, Andy Mansell, are you on? Core spreads. Is it core spreads, anyone? Who's on core spreads? 2.3. There you go. Uh, Andy says two points from 7 a.m., one point from 2.30 p.m. There you go, Bibiana. Two points all day from 7 a.m., which isn't bad for the Dow. One point from 2.30. Think trader have 1.5. There you go. Nice one. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> 3.6 on Think Trader. Oh, C Trader, I think 3.6. Fair enough. I, I get a pro account, so I get one and two, and I'm happy with that. Um, 
but all brokers vary. What I would suggest when you're choosing a broker to everyone, it's what I do suggest, is that you choose a broker who gives a rebate to you, to you, so that every time you place a trade, the spread that they earn, 20% of that comes back to you, not your introducing broker, not me, not some other plank that's going to make money whether you win, lose or draw, to you. Because you are the most important person on the planet to you. It will always be that way. So act like it. You know what I mean? I think are good, but they vary when it gets nasty. That sounds fair. I don't use them. I use that like I use them for the charting. I really like the charting, and it's free. But I use another broker with my money in it. Core spreads are Australia for better margin. Nice one, Andy. Appreciate that. Now, didn't we be looking at bullish divergence a minute ago and a low test bar and, and a breakout and now a signal? You know, that's what we're looking at. That's all we're looking at. It's the same. We're looking at the same thing over and over again. If you were to open a highway code um, and learn to drive from it, it won't give you one set of rules today and another set of rules tomorrow. But it will give you one set of rules if you're riding a bicycle and another set of rules if you're driving a car, a bus or a lorry. Will it not? Of course it will. So I will tell you that there is one set of rules if you're trading the Dow and another set of rules completely if you're going to trade something like the GB dollar, the euro dollar or AM other currency pair and that is fair i'm not even going to ask yet does that sound fair i'm going to tell you that's fair and if you're one of those people who trades like what's it called what's it called bitcoin and there are a few on i'll warn everyone in our group right now there is a very professional trader here she trades bitcoin and she's a very experienced well able trader of bitcoin you would need a completely different mindset to trade Bitcoin. Where's my mouse? There you are, mouse. Uh, and that's the reality. It's the same. Whatever market you're looking at, you need a different mindset, a different set of rules and associated terms and conditions to trade the market of your choice. You need tools. There's one of my tools. It's a fib drawing. I go in a run of color, green, 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 green. I need at least three greens or I can't draw a fib. And then I get a red bar. And as soon as I've got a red bar, I can draw a fib now. And then I have my 38.2, which is continuation. My 50, which is careful, steady, steady. And my 61.8, which is, it's out. It's all over. Forget about it. This trade is not going your way today. You know? That's it. We use these tools and you'll note how price is stalling at them. It was stalling at the 38.2 a minute ago. It stopped exactly on the 50 for a moment, hasn't it? It's not like just bombed right through. It's sitting on the 50 and it's testing it on a one minute chart, for Christ's sake, you know? And it's now going to test the 61.8 before maybe breaking it and we look for a pattern. There you go. It needs to go like a pip or two below that. And there you go, it's broken it done so the fib is dead and all bullish on the dial one minute 932 missed it one minute 932 yeah that's that one we pointed that one out andy i did i pointed it out anyway um so i didn't miss it oh, oh, oh. um well, well i suppose i'm open to questions always i i'm not one of those guys that says oh, save all your questions till the end lads i'll have forgotten what i was saying by the end Unless it's written down, I already forgot what I was saying. So you want to ask me a question, you fire away. There is nothing that's off limits. Ask what you like. And welcome, everybody. We have 88 people online. They're from the UK. They're from America. They're from Australia. They're from all over the world. And you're all very welcome. It's nice to have you on. I thought for our group, just so you know why I'm doing this, it would help you to know that there are other professional traders out there that I do talk to, I do discuss things with. Um, there are other amateur traders out there that I do talk to, I do discuss things with, I do help. And there's, you know, in honesty, there's not one of them going to tell you that they've given me money yet. You know, they're not in our group, so we're not 
that's it. It's just but I, but I do help them. I've shown them stuff like this, really basic sort of. Have a look at that. Have a look at baby pips, and uh, you know, because you all know by now that the benefit you get out of me as a mentor. I'm not one of those namby pamby mentors that will say, "Okay, we'll just do it properly next time." If you screw it up royally, you're going to get told royally. And I had a chat with someone last week, and he is on, and he, I, I don't want him to confirm this because it might be embarrassing for him. But I, I, I did have a chat with someone on the group last week who was looking at a five-minute yesterday chart versus a two-minute today chart, and he bloody well got told. You know, why would you do that? Why? You're giving away your money. Why would you do that? Is what, he, is what it is. Jason, yet what happens in your group? Well, we have a WhatsApp group and we share, that's all. We talk, we share, we have webinars. I share webinar links. I, I, you know, that's it. That's what happens in my group, Jason. Let someone else tell you because you're on the group. Um, someone's unmuted. If you want a voice question, feel free, ask away. No? I do several strategies indeed, yes. We have currency... <laughs> Oh, yeah, there you go, Zoe Turn. You have unlimited one to ones. You do indeed. We have um, we have several currency strategies, depending on whether you're a four hour, a 30 minute, or a two minute trader. You know, you know what you want to look at, so you tell me in an update. We have eight hour strategies for equities, four hour strategies for currencies. We have one, three, and five minute strategies for indices. Various indices, like I've got FTSE, DAX, Dow, we have different strategies for them. So if I go right click and I say load template, you'll see this is a list of my, that's my long range forecasting tool. Way back when price was 20,613, um, 20, I called a buy trade, or I told everybody on my group, that was in March, end of March, April last year, no, this year that the Dow would go to 20,000, sorry, 28,657. Does that sound fair? Can anyone in my group confirm that? 2613, I've got a bloody recorded webinar any, anyway. There you go, thanks George, thanks Nicholas, John, thank you. Uh, I, I, on the long range forecasting tool, which is that chart there, I said the Dow will go up now and it'll stall along the way a couple of times, but the target is 28,657, it was like 8,000 pips away. We have very simple strategies. You can use a single screen for that one or that one. That one is a backup. It's a five-minute chart. That one is a two-minute chart. These are for, Well, that's for currencies. That's for indices. Um, that's for a 15-minute. That's a very simple one. That's pretty much, it's not quite what you're looking at now, but it's very simple. That's what you're looking at now. A DWL2, sorry, is what you're looking at now. Um, Elimination of range ribbon. That's what that is. And it's got someone's initial on it because somebody in particular wanted it. A simple one minute with the DMI, a uh, simple one minute HAC, high Kanashi candles, the DWL cross, BB plus, B, that's our uh, four hour, I think. No, the, that one's our four hour and that one's our 30 minute. That's it. It's very simple. Um, tertiary multiple time frames is that what that's what that is you know and plan b some of you are from america you know i showed that to some americans on one of your webinars that's what that is plan b it's pretty much this um, that's it so there are there are lots of stra strategies but what you've got to remember is you know we are we are 89 people online there will be different races religions colors political beliefs sexes um, views on sexual relations and things like that. Everyone is different. And labeling people as things is where things start to go very wrong. It should be the original sin, labeling people as things. Oh, he's a Muslim. Oh, she's a lesbian. Oh, he's a gay person. All of that crap is crap. And when we as humanity get past that, we will be able to call ourselves mankind. Again, because there is no kind in mankind. We are humanity and that's about it. And I know that's a bit of a rant, but it's all associated to trading because we are humans and we will continue to make human mistakes until we get our finger out our asses and realize that there is a right step to take or you just be a tosser. And well, I'm going to, you know, because here's where people go wrong. I did say I'll demonstrate where people go wrong. 
Um, but you, you take that by, and that thing there catches you out. That big bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing bar catches you out, uh, and and it, and you come out lower than you got in because well, Europe's just opened, and there's, and there's volume just come into the market, and you oh bugger, I'm going to sell that. I'm, I was in at one pound a pip. I'm going to go two pound a pip and get me money back, and you don't. So you go in at four pound a pip and get your money back, and you don't get your money back. In fact, you lose it. So you get eight pound a pip and get your money back, and you don't. You cannot martingale the crap out of trading. You just can't. You can't. That is all. You need to know when to step back. So the right way to do it is to say, hang on, what went wrong for me here? Oh, Europe opened, and I didn't see that that had gone red. I did not lock in ahead of Europe opening, so I got taken out. Oh, aren't I stupid? Never mind. Do you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to observe carefully ideally without being observed, while there's a good, solid set of reasons with all the associated terms and conditions, and I'm going to get my little bit of money back that I lost. And there you go. How would one join your group? Is there a criteria? Um, Ahmed, Amira, I'm not sure which is your first name or second. You just message me privately later. There's many, many, but however you got to hear of me, Go through those channels. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. I'm on WhatsApp. I've got email. By all means, contact me and we'll set up a chat. Um, I'm not a heavy bread salesman. So, you know, the ball's in your car. Join, don't join. I don't mind. I don't care. It's up to you. Uh, but contact me through that outside of the group. I do share better stuff. In my group, we don't use that or that. We use, and I'll flash it up, we use that. And it's fucking brilliant. And we all love the cap out of it. It's nice and it's simple and it's easy. And all, you know? Well, it's proud of you, boss. You're so restrained. Don't lose it now. Oh, don't worry, Michael. I'm not going to lose it now. Um, cheers, Bob. Enjoy. We have simple, easy strategies. I'm not trying to sell anything, Michael, if that's what you mean. I've invited people on here so that they can learn you know, you can use, Doctor, you go to babypips.com, follow that link I showed you. You can learn it all there free. You know, it will be, it'll take you time to get through it. It is what it is. You can't learn trading overnight. It's a marathon, not a sprint. But you can make exceptional quantities of money from being a trader. You don't need to make people rich. Um, and in fairness, Michael, you know, People don't make me rich from, from, from teaching. I don't charge that much, you know, in fairness. Or was I having a rant? Oh, thank you. Okay. I don't even remember. What was I? I believe yeah. I, I might well have been believing, ranting. But that's my point. You know, that's where traders go wrong. They get caught out in this bit and they increase their stake. And that's a problem. You see, the reason I was saying it is one of the soldiers was meant to join us. You, you all remember, my group all remember me talking about the two soldiers and they turned 50. 50 bloody euro into 7,700 in two weeks. And then one of them went on a martingale gambling spree when he had one losing trade. And yes, I ranted then. That's cause to rant. That upset me that day. Uh, it was the other one that was going to join the webinar today. And I was looking for his name. I didn't see it in there. But, um, you know, if he's on, if you're on, by all means, say hello. And, and he, like anyone else, knows my door's always open to my traders. You all heard me welcome Ross back into the group. He took a break from trading. He's back in the group. There's, there's no admin fee or subscription charge or none of that bollocks. He wants back in. He's in and all. That's it. Everything in my group is free once you've learned with me. Uh, are we seeing divergence here anywhere? No convergence. If we scroll back a bit, we are. Look, lower, low, and a significant low test bar, low test bar. Note it doesn't matter whether the bar is green or red. It's still a bloody low. So I've got lower lows over higher lows. And then it pulled back. Hell of a, didn't it? Pulled back like 20, more, 20 odd pips. So you can see why my divergence on my one minute is crucial to me. It's the difference between taking like 20 or 30 pips down here or 10 pips up here. That's the difference, you know. Thank you for reining me in, Michael, if I was writing. I do apologize. Oh, thanks for that. Thanks for the heads up. So um, anyway, I'm very proud to be speaking with a doctor. Uh, we, we do have other doctors in the group, just so you know. Ian, are you on, Ian? 
where's Ian and Dave, two UK from Liverpool. Guys, we've got two doctors from Liverpool who were on. Uh, I don't know if they're on today, actually, but they're members of the group. Proper medical doctors, too. They guided me with Stacey one day. Do you use the divergence indicator? No, Stephen, I use my eyesight. I've got great glasses. And I find that seeing the divergence, I'll see it much, much quicker than any indicator has appeared on screen. It's the same with fractals, Stephen. We could put a fractal indicator on here, and if I put fractals on, you, you know, it will appear like five bars later than you see it. I can see the fractal as soon as he closes there and he opens and drops below him. I can see that fractal. The indicator won't show until the close of the bar, in fact, the close of that bar, if it's a five-point fractal. So I've got to wait for a whole other two minutes before I see the indicator, whereas, sure, I know that's a fractal as soon as he's gone below his low. You know what I mean? And then I can start reacting. That's what I say about when you're driving, these driving analogies. I can see that the guy up ahead of me is using his mobile phone. I can see it through his through his wing mirror. I'm looking at his wing mirror and seeing that he's using his mobile phone and he's going to start drifting into this lane in a minute. So I'm getting ready to, to sort of drop back and sell the market. You know what I mean? Preparation is key. Proper planning and all that. And it's all crystal clear, obvious. Note, we couldn't buy bullish divergence, but we can lock in, take more money, and then we've got a bearish fractal, a breakout below a low, and you can continue selling it, can't you? We do indeed, Paul. There you go. Paul mentions that the group also has several automation strategies. We share everything. I'm kind of very, very proud of the fact that we, as a group, share with each other. I won't lie and tell you I've learned nothing from my group and I've taught them everything. In fact, Paul, who shared that last message on screen there, was identified last week, I think, in a webinar or the week before, uh, in, in the same way that Mr. Paul Burrow or Mr. Peter Dax uh, Burrows was identified as Mr. Paul became Mr. Paul Brighton for uh, 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 an addition he made to the group in an observation he made on the charts. He said, look at this particular thing, lads, and it will help you. Um, and, you know, I'm sure he won't mind me naming him for that. It, it is what it is. We share in our group. We are traders helping traders. And I suppose this webinar is just a highlight of that. That's what we are. That's who we are. It's probably the thing I am most proud of building because I built the group, I suppose, and I'm thrilled that it helps people. Now, we've got, what are we on, 9.54? There's like five minutes left of the webinar. Feel free, fire away questions, comments, thoughts. You know, none of the indicators show. You can see I've got a rake of tabs open here, and I've opened some. Uh, I showed you the, the eight-hour equities strategy once upon a long ago. We set this up, and we said you could trade 40 equities. You could alarm all of them. And if you look at the quantity of pips available from this one alone, you'd be a very happy camper on Tesla, wouldn't you? It's a similar story with the likes of Apple and Coca-Cola and Disney and NVIDIA and all of those majors. You know, your trading style is yours. It's yours only. You are you. You are Michael, you are Paul, you are James, you are Harvey, you are who you are. And the market works for you if you tell it to and ask it to. And that's all. But you must listen to it. There's no way me saying, oh, I'm, I'm going to buy this. I've got a what? A what? I'm not allowed. I must sell it. I'm going to buy a bullish divergence. Are you mad, James? It's below the double white lines. You're not going to buy anything. You're going to wait until you can sell it again. And if you did come out of that sell because you had 30 pips on the table, great. You either be thankful for your 30 pips or you look for a continuation sell and all. Thank you for that. Thank you very much, Dr. Amira. Thank you. Thank you. Um, when a sell's already underway, like pullbacks, yes. Well, here you go, Jason. Here's what you can do. You can look for a fib. There isn't one. I need at least three reds and a green. I haven't got one, so I can't. Or you can look for price action. Remember the fractal? 
you could go in on the low of him or the close of him with a stop loss on the top of him, and that would have got you in. There's another fractal, a green green. If if you look on the if you, if you go Google and you search something like power pivots, it talks about a daily. You know, you're in a sell trend, and then you get two green bars against you, a breakout below the green bar. So there's a potential entry right there. This chart don't know it's a daily. All it knows is I'm a, I'm a low test bar. I'm a, um, what am I? I'm a high test, but indecision bar. I'm a low test bar. That's what it knows. And I use an analogy with my guys. I watched a movie once called, um, what was it called? Jeremiah Johnson. And an old, old, old hunter, an old man was teaching Jeremiah Johnson to hunt. And he said, just walk out in the clearing, walk out behind your horse, slide your rifle up over the saddle and shoot the elk. And Jeremiah Johnson says, won't the elk see me legs? And the old man says, elk don't know how many legs a horse has. And I thought, well, yeah, this chart don't know it's an hourly chart. It just knows I'm a low test bar. I'm a fractal. I'm a low a height, a low test bar. I'm a, I'm a fractal. I'm a fractal. I'm a low test bar. I'm an inside bar. I'm a breakout bar. But what? You know, that's it. They're all telling you something. All of these bars are telling you something. You can listen or later on you can say, how did I miss all of that? Well, you didn't listen. That's it. That's the honest to God answer. If you didn't get that sell, you didn't listen. You didn't look and you missed it all. And it kind of serves you right. You know, it's, it's not a nice thing to say. It serves you right. You've got a reason. Remember I said you've got a trade entry or you lack trade management. That's it. It's all very, very doable. Very. We put him on. He says you lock in above the line and above the line you're in and boom and all. That's it. You know, I'm not going to go into the settings on anything. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to really sell to you. I'm just trying to point out to you that this is doable for everybody. I mean, everybody. Bottom line, lads, I grew up in Liverpool with nothing. Right? You can tell from my accent. And yes, I speak other languages. You know, Yacharasho Gabriel Poluski. Um, yeah, throw a movie for Paul School. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Je parle le français. I speak many languages. Um, um, you know, you know, I speak languages, and I learned all of those because I liked learning. It's all there to be done. All you gotta do is put the effort in and be taught right. You need some teaching with some energy. That's all. Thanks, Andy. I know, I know. But I believe there are some, um, the name of the MACD, it's a standard MACD. This one isn't, this is an OSMA, an oscillator of moving averages. OSMA, O-S-M-A. That's what he is. And he is a MACD by all accounts. Go on, lads. It's 10 o'clock. I'll call it a day right here. My guys, I'm on the WhatsApp if you want me, and I'll see you all at 1.30. Thank you all for joining me. I appreciate that you took the time. I appreciate the feedback. Um, feel free, however you got to know me or however you got on this webinar, feel free to share some feedback and let me know your thoughts. I'm always open to a chat with traders. I enjoy it. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. And um, I'll, for my guys, I'll see you on the webinar this afternoon. Trade safe, everybody. Bye, guys.